There's no more Jesus in Siberia. For now, he will be staying in Moscow. On September 22, 2020, during a special operation, officers of the Federal Security Service of Russia detained Sergei Torov, aka Vissarion, aka Siberian Jesus. Are we still doing crucifixions? No. He was detained together with other leaders of the community, Vadim Redkin and Vladimir Vidernikov, on the fact of illegal activities of a religious organization and on suspicion of psychological violence against multiple people. Let's remember who this person is and how did he manage to build a small paradise away from the civilization. So, Sergei Torov was born in 1961, and at the age of 14 he moved with his mother to the Krasnoyarsk region, to the city of Minusinsk. Funnily enough, I talked about Minusinsk just a week ago, in a video about the most terrible Russian prisons. Vissarion actually has every chance to be back in the city of his childhood. Until the age of 28, Sergei lived an ordinary life. He served in the army, then worked as a mechanic, electrician, artist and finally as sergeant of the traffic police. And in 1990, after visiting the UFO club, he experienced a spiritual awakening, as he himself says. Naturally, he immediately conducted his first sermon in 1991, but he was still not Christ. Jesus just spoke to him from the orbit, and Vissarion himself was his prophet, Prophet Yefle. Vissarion began to call himself Jesus only in 1994, when he created the Church of the Last Testament the most successful cult in the history of modern Russia, practically the only one that survived for more than 25 years. In the early 90s, Vissarion began to travel around the former USSR and recruit followers for himself. Jesus did not really possess a special gift of persuasion. Many even say that he is very tongue-tied and boring in his sermons. But some people insist that he mastered the technique of hypnosis. There are reports that people often fell asleep at his lectures, and when they woke up, they woke up as ardent adherents of the cult. Vissarion tried to keep all his followers close to him, so he strongly advised them to move and live under his wing. Those people who wanted to be closer to God for the sake of this sold their houses and moved to various villages of the Krasnoyarsk Krai. In total, Vissarion at that time received up to 10,000 followers. Not everyone is allowed to live next to him. Many have stayed in their cities and are working as preachers. About two or three thousand live in the villages of the Krasnoyarsk region, and finally the closest ones. 150 to 200 people. They live in the abode of dawn itself, next to their gods. As I said, the Siberian Jesus is not very charismatic, so it is more difficult to him to keep supporters around for a long time. If god Kuzia could keep women nearby simply by the power of his charm, then Sergei had to come up with other methods. The most effective thing is to take away everything that these people had. His followers sold apartments in Moscow in order to move to the Siberian taiga and then donated all their money to the community or to Sergei himself. And where will they go now, even if they are disappointed in the cult and want to leave? They have nothing left, which means there is simply no way back from a board of dawn. The board of dawn was founded in 1995 by followers of Vissarion in the Kuragensky region of the Krasnoyarsk Krai. It is a very secluded place. Children in the community most often do not go to the general education schools, they are taught according to a special program. For example, Vissarion raised his second wife for himself this way. He sheltered the girl Sonia and her mother when the girl was like 7 or 8 years old and then married her when she was 17. His first and, well, legal wife Lyubov endured for some time, but then could not stand it and left for Krasnoyarsk. Vissarion actually did a pretty good job on the theoretical basis of his religion, which is a mix of Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity and the teachings of Karl Marx. The cult has a tithe. Its members are obliged to work hard, only manual labor is used. Alcohol, meat and all technological advances of the humanity are prohibited. Moreover, Vissarion himself does not follow these rules. The sect has its own chronology and calendar. For example, the year 2020 is only 59th according to their chronology. From the birth of Vissarion, of course. There are only three official holidays. First, April 14th, Earth Day. In fact, this is the approximate day of Vissarion's conception. The second one, August 18th, day of the fall of the Kingdom of Power, 
In fact, this is the day of the August coup d'etat in the USSR. And the 3rd, January 14th, the day of the Nativity of Christ. In fact, of course, the birthday of Sergei Torop. I actually don't know how the cults celebrate these holidays because they banned not only alcohol but also any other material values. They can't even buy a cake in a local store for God's sake. But polygamy is allowed, at least they have that. Information about the increased attention of federal investigators to Vissarion arose more than once, but police always faced the fact that the local authorities had zero complaints against him. It is known that in 2005 Vissarion obliged the followers of his cult to support the governor of the Krasnoyarsk Krai, Alexander Hlaponin, in the coming elections. In exchange, the governor left the settlement alone. In addition, on major matters, Vissarion tried not to oppose the state. In 2000, during counter-terrorist operation Whirlwind Anti-Terror, FSB officers detained 35-year-old Tatyana Nikharoshova Sokolova, who was a member of Vissarion cult and also a wanted terrorist. Vissarion himself helped the investigation, again in exchange for the quiet life of his village. But everything comes to an end. Since 2018, constant searches have been carried out at a boat of dawn, and finally on September 22, 2020, Torop and his closest assistant were detained. According to a local resident, machine gunners and helicopters took part in the special operation of FSB. Most likely, the private school Istoki in the village of Cherimshanka was to blame. Up to a thousand followers of Vissarion live in Cherimshanka and their children go to this school. The fact is that in addition to the usual subjects of elementary school, the teachings of Vissarion are also preached in it. And this is actually against the laws of the Russian Federation. Although, most likely this was not the end of it. In the past five years, the community of the Vissarion cult became very withdrawn. They even stopped recruiting new people. Any such closed community can hide crimes for a long time. There can be violence, murders and other things. Sooner or later this becomes known to the law enforcement agency. Apparently one of the former members of the community complained. And after that the searches began. If the leaders of the cult are found guilty, they may face fines up to $3,000 and imprisonment for up to 12 years. However, we have already seen the case of the god Kuzia, who stayed in prison only for a couple of years. Vissarion also left a legal loophole for himself. Formally, he does not in any way keep his followers around him. If someone wants to leave, they are free to do it. His people do not have any money to do this, since money are actually prohibited in the board of dawn, but who cares? Still, the charge of kidnapping and illegal detention of people will definitely not be brought up against Sergei Torop. So, perhaps soon Vissarion will return to his people, and the god will reappear in the board of dawn.